Welcome, everyone, to episode six of the Code X podcast. I'm your host, Sonny Kruger. With me, as usual, is my co-host, Jamie Wilkins. How is it going, guys? I am excited for episode six today. I hope you guys are, too. Me, too. Episode 06, and once again, I'm hosting. I, I Sonny Kruger, am hosting from now on, and we'll be going over many things, like the Captain America controversy. Miles Morales has been around for 10 years. I have a mail call, which I'll talk about that in a moment, and... We will be reviewing Daredevil Born Again by Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli. Yes, we will. There's, there's a bunch of other news we got for you guys today, too, and I'm pretty excited for all of it. It, it It's going to be amazing. <laughs> oh, it is. I'm excited. So, uh, first things first, we had the pre-show. Always make sure to check us out on twitch.tv slash codex podcast if you want to check out the pre-show. And in the pre-show, for my mail call... I said that if someone can get, if anybody can guess this right, I'll give them ten dollars. It means if you know five people get it right, I'm giving ten to each of you, right? So for my mail call, if you can guess it right, the hint, if you can guess it right, you get ten dollars. The hint is something with a gigantic trial. That is a hint. Jamie, your guess was... I said Civil War because of the fact that I have no idea and I'm probably wrong anyway, so you can keep my 10, I guess. <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm not taking 10s. I'm only only going to give if I if I lose. If somebody can guess it, I give them a 10. Yeah. So, guessing you, you, know, you have no... You don't, want, you don't have anything to lose if you get it wrong. Yeah, except my dignity. You win $10, right. okay, except what? my dignity. <laughs> Well, you, you lost it years ago. When I met you. <laughs> before. <laughs> All right. But also, so today we'll start it out. Jamie has a big announcement, and I will let you tell everybody what's going on. As Sonny was saying earlier, if you didn't catch out the pre-show at twitch.tv slash Codex Podcast, I gave a little bit more information than I should have. So go check that out to hear the full thing. Um, but for the first time in over a year and a half, me and Sonny are going to be face-to-face again. And we're going to be doing a podcast live on the 31st. We don't know what time yet. We're going to figure it out. And as soon as we do, we're going to post it on all medias. So uh, with Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, even though no one's there. Um, and we're going to go from there. We're going to have some special guests. Um, it's going to be probably the longest Codex podcast podcast we've done. So, yeah. Everybody get ready. Um, yeah, unless yeah, we hope to get, have it be a long one. Uh, let's give the warning out there that this one will be an uncensored uh, special episode on the 31st. Will be an uncensored episode. So there may be language that's not used on our usual episode. Yeah, so for YouTube purposes and Spotify, there will be bleeping and probably going to take up most of the episode. So you're ready to just hear that the entire time you're listening. <laughs> oh, oh, shut the beep up. Beep yourself. Yeah, I see basically things like that. But yeah, like I said, we'll be face to face, so there may be some trash talk. We may start fighting. We may knock over the webcam, or who knows what's going to happen. Hatchet's thrown. It's going to be great. Maybe hatchet's thrown. Headbutts using VR uh, sets. Oh, that'd be fun. Laugh. Concussions. Yeah. Someone's ending up good, yeah. in the hospital that night. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> And it won't be me. I can guarantee you that. But that's I what you're going to be you thinking when you open your eyes. <laughs> hmm? Laying on your back, staring at the lights. Just, I swear to God, it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm shaking in my boots. <laughs> okay, man, but there's a bit of that. And I'm sure there'll be a lot more of that on the 31st on our special episode of Codex Podcast. But... Our, our first news of the day, I will let Jamie take it away with Black Adam. Oh, okay. So it is official Black Adam has wrapped. Um, there's two points to this I want to bring up. One is kind of humbling, and two is just funny to anybody. Um, so as they wrapped, they shot the last uh, scene with Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and the whole crew had like a, almost like a potluck raffle at the end where it was like it came up to like thirty one hundred dollars, 
and they were drawing three names. The first person got 10%. Second person, I think, got 20%. And then the third or the first place got 70% of that pot luck. Well, uh, The Rock basically said that isn't enough. We're making it 10 grand, even. So he gave more money to him. It just seeing it was awesome. Everyone's reaction. Um, the dude who won the most was just losing it. I mean, if I won so much money from The Rock, I'd probably lose it too. Hashtag The Rock when we put this on Twitter. Um, yeah, it's awesome. It went. That is cool. Yeah. So that that was humbling. I know the the clip is on. I seen it on Facebook, but I know it's everywhere right now. I think The Rock actually posted it as well. You know, clout for himself. Um, the second piece of news was when I was reading an article about uh, Black Adam starting. Sonny, did you know that they tried to put a muscle padded suit on The Rock? No, I did not. <laughs> they they literally he they well, they, they said the he he came out and went, "You do not put me in." a muscle padded suit when his leg is bigger than my waist. Like (laughs) how do you do that to the guy that's worked out more than anybody in the world and say, Hey, you know what? Your muscles look amazing, but let's add more like that. It it makes no sense to me. And he, he even said, he's like, uh, let's let's just take this away. A lot of money. What was that? (laughs) I think it probably cost a lot of money to make that. And then like I said, it's just waste. Oh yeah. Like why would you do that for the rock? Right, right. It it the dude is just un he he's a superhero himself if you look at him. Yeah, he's like bigger than he is now than he was in wrestling. Yeah. And it it's just it's weird to think about if you were that big and someone came up to you and like, Hey, you're gonna go in your super suit now and uh it's padded and you're the rock. What what do you say? <laughs> I would laugh. I think I would think it was a joke. Yeah. That, and that's how it uh, you gotta take it. And I thought I just thought it was funny, like just envisioning it in my head, like him just being like, "Uh, no, um, we're gonna go with what I think, and that's my normal muscle." Dave, Dave yeah. jumped on. He's like, "Honey, where's my super suit?" <laughs> so yeah, uh, that was that piece of news. I just thought it was humbling and funny at the same time. So. And it is cool. And they said they said the Rock has so much money he's in so many movies. It's cool that he made us say, "Hey, you know, it'll be ten thousand And like I said, they really made somebody's day and their year. And it's a cool story to always talk about. Like I said, who wouldn't be happy to be like, "Guess what? I won ten, you know, almost ten thousand dollars from the Rock." Right. But on to our next news: My- Miles Morales, Spider-Man, has been around for ten years. It's his tenth anniversary coming up, and. They're also coming out with a new outfit for him. For me, when I said outfit, it wasn't too special. I mean, it's fine, but I think the character should stay the way he is. I mean, he's only been around 10 years, and I really like the outfit. And what I want to say about there is, Miles Morales, I think, is one of the best new characters, especially one of the best characters from the past decade. You know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, when people say representation, they say, oh, we, we want to see more people of color. And then now there's a lot of changing characters that, like I'd say, we've known and have loved for, for decades. And now the characters change. They change them like this way, that way. And I think Miles Morales is the perfect way that they brought somebody, you know, um, somebody of color to be a huge name. Like, they didn't have to replace Peter Parker. I mean, they didn't have to make Peter Parker change or his story or anything. They brought in a new character in Miles Morales. To also be another Spider-Man, and to me, that's the way I like to see it go down. That's how I like to see new characters brought in, not just changing up the old ones, but bringing in new characters. So, with Miles Morales being around ten years, I am a fan, and I hope they stick with the original outfit for him. Yeah, I I gotta agree. He they did uh, break that molding with him as a person of color coming in, and you know you you don't have to make any changes to Peter Parker. You don't have to. Do anything except, you know, the clone saga. Um, but he he was one of those guys when Bendis brought him in, like, that just rejuvenized the whole franchise. I, w- I want to say, like, you have two Spider-Man titles running right now, you know. And they tried yeah. to decipher it between, Spider- like, the Amazing Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2, which was Miles Morales. 
but I do disagree with you on one part. Uh, changing the outfit, I think that with Miles, he's consistently growing and changing, and with him having you know that creative outlook as a character himself, I would expect more of more changes from him, whoever's writing it, of course, but more changes to his outfit. You know, rocking the Nikes, uh, changing up those colors to go with whatever he's wearing you know new suit wise I, I think i think it's a good thing i think it brings uh a little bit more attention to him because it when you think of peter parker spider-man you you see one suit you see one color coordinated suit because you've seen it for so long and people get outraged every time they try to change the the suit if it isn't his normal suit people get upset i mean they just tried doing it I want to say not even a couple, three months ago they did one and everyone's like, why are they changing the suit? That's so stupid. He's been in the same suit for so long. But now you have that opportunity to do that. And I think that's cool that you can use Miles Morales as your, you know, go-to for it. All right. That's cool. I say, yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. So I get that. All right. So now on to the... The next part of news, I was going to let you take this one away with Ursa Major. Oh, okay. So, this one kind of, I don't know, it's weird to me. Um, so, for I have not personally seen Black Widow yet. I'm going to, but as soon as this news broke out, I had to go in and look into it. Um, I seen the, like, the still scene of it, and it's basically got uh, Ursa Major, who is a bear, but he's in human form. In what seems to be a prison. And the actor came out and said that he is the first mutant officially in the MCU. Now, with that news, usually, and it usually happens this way, if any big or name star or any supporting cast or just anybody in general that's part of the movie comes out and says something that Marvel or Disney disagree with, there is a statement brought out the next day. Saying, you know, they're either approving it or denying it or whatever the, you know, it may be. I haven't read anything about it. No one's come out and said no. Like, that. that's not true. Kevin Feige said, um, I want to say, at least, uh, I think it was before Phase, before they announced all the Phase 4 movies that are coming out, that they're not looking at any mutants to join the MCU for like another five years because I think at that point that's when the contracts run up with Sony and they can have the rights officially. Um, but no one's come out and said that it's not true. So if it is confirmed that it, he is the first mutant, I kind of want to know if we're going to be start, you know, start to see more come in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Especially if we're seeing maybe in movies like, you know, Spider-Man, um, with the upcoming Spider-Man, the upcoming Doctor Strange, since they're going to, like, you know, multiple universes and everything, I think we may start to see some more cameos and things like that from you. Yeah, but cameos, to me, and being a part and established are two totally different things. Like, it'd be cool in Multiverse Madness we get, like, a Logan cameo or we get, you know, both Jean Grey's popping in somewhere, you know, something like that, or both Cyclopses. You know, but that doesn't establish that they're there in our continuity of the MCU at that time. Now, with everything that's been happening with Loki, uh, the multiverse is all screwed up. Which, Sonny, if you haven't checked out Loki yet, you, you need to. Um, it, 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 yeah. it just basically filled out all of Phase 4 for us. <laughs> like, every movie coming out, that's why we got all of them now. They had this set up perfectly um nice i definitely gotta get to that but to i, I wanna like I, I i for me to say he was a mutant in that movie i'd have to see him turn into the bear that, that that's my like if you're standing there as human it's great but i, I want to see it happen <laughs> like yeah we gotta see then, it. yeah the actual transformation yeah, yeah so but yeah, that's uh, that's sort of a major for you. I hopefully we see more mutants in upcoming films, but we're gonna see where it leads. 
Yeah, that's what I'm hoping to. Because like I said, especially, you know, I love X-Men and all this. So I think we're going to start to see them. I think slowly we're going to start to see them. And then it's going to start to pick up with like a big part. I mean, one character has a big part in a movie. And then there's an X-Men movie in itself. Right. All right. So now we move on to more major, or not to more major Ursa. Or, we're done with Ursa Major. Okay, so now on to more news. We're on to Poison Ivy. Now, this we have a, a spoiler for Crime Syndicate number five, in case anybody hasn't read it. In Crime Syndicate number five, Poison Ivy is in there. She is in the Legion of Justice, and it is revealed that she has a new look, and now she's actually going by the superhero name of Venus. Yeah. Now, for me, the look reminded me of Groot. I kept thinking, I'm like, yeah, I don't care for this new look. It's she reminds me of Groot, like a woman Groot. What do you think? Well, I've been, I've actually been keeping up with that series because it's only a six issue mini. Um, with that, they're basically, it's almost like, how can I put it? It's like their Elseworld story, their own singular, singular story. Uh, the look coming over is cool. I mean, it does kind of remind me of Groot. Uh, everything with that, like, because you have, like, Ultraman, you have Superwoman, you have uh, Power Ring instead of Green Lantern, you have yeah. uh, Atomico, which is the Atom, but a chick. Um, like, they all have different names than what they are in continuity. So, seeing that, it was kind of cool to see, but it's not... I, I, I don't feel that it's going to carry over well into... Because I think... Right now, they're doing something with Suicide Squad as well. So, it might carry over into mainstream continuity. But as of right now, I don't see it for going in that route. Yeah. I mean, neither. They said also that in Catwoman, uh, Poison Ivy has a new outfit as well. And it's when she looks more regular, more womanly, not much like a, not much like a tree. So Yeah. It, and like I, said, I, I mean, I get it. It's a, it's a mini series, but I would be surprised if the group style Poison Ivy carries over like set to the main DC um, continuity. Yeah, it, it'll definitely like, I, I feel like they'll pick things apart and be like, this works this doesn't, get rid of this, keep that you know, kind of that deal um, but a mix would be cool, I mean, the way we've been or the way they've been presenting her as of late has been more normal lies than anything else especially in Harley Quinn series. They're, they're trying, I think, feel like they're trying to make her look like she looks like in Harley Quinn, the animated series in our continuity as it stands right now, but trying to beef her up and make her look as cool as possible in their minds in their mini series and Elseworld stories. So. Yeah. Like I said, that's a cool thing with like the Elseworlds stories and miniseries. So, you know, you can try it. Go for what you know. Take risks. Yeah, definitely. If it doesn't work out. Hey, at least, at least you tried. Right. And there, there are some things that have come out of Elseworlds stories that have been adapted, like suit wise or maybe even uh, retconned in to continuity because of that fact. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. I, 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 I hope they pick apart every little piece and. You know, figure out what they want to do from there. All right. So moving on to Captain America. Jamie, I'll let you take this controversial one away. Okay, so with Captain America, I believe... Uh, I, I don't know. I don't remember if it was a writer or a publisher at that point, but someone came out and basically said, uh, are you, or is, as a fan base... Are you tired of seeing Captain America basically see failure in America as it stands? Now, to me, that is a controversial statement, but it's also a broad statement. Now, they're, throughout Captain America's run and, um, you know, story arcs, everything he's been through, it's kind of hard to sit there and say that he sees, like, a failure or anything in America because... The only time you can really see it is Civil War. You know, he felt like he, he was let down. But, I mean, you can't say you, you see that failure in something where it's like, we're fighting Thanos. This is America's fault. They failed to defeat Thanos, too. Like, that, you can't pull that. So, stories that, 
like go up against red like the red skull or anything else. You, you you're coming out trying to light a fire that isn't there but now it's growing because of the fact that you put a couple words together like even in the comics like Captain America states blatantly he does not support politicians like he doesn't go out and be like vote for so and so or the other way around it he just tries to make his home as good as possible and he sounds he sounds a lot like me yeah yeah um but like opposite so bizarro world sonny um real yeah they're really you uh but no it, it it he the way they stated it it was too broad of a statement it was too i feel like it was more to catch uh and like someone's eye because there's so many different variables in it that it just can't be while well, you're tired of seeing them you know see failure no it, it it's not that it's failure in his ability to defend everybody it's failure in everyone he works with um it it isn't failure in the sense of he's not going up to the cop and be like you didn't do your job in the comics so it to me it, it he's just it was just looking for a way to get attention and I, that part I feel is wrong. I would have rephrased it as, are you tired of seeing like Captain America's failures add up other than, you know, bring the whole U.S. into it? <laughs> yeah, because I said Captain America every now and then for a long time, he has, every now and then, like, it would be part he's thinking to himself and he'll question things. But as most people do, you know, when you're dealing with all the things in your life, sometimes you question but he's he, like you said, he's never, you know, gotten mad at random cops. He's never ripped up the American flag or anything like that. So I think I agree with you. I think it's more just to try to get a conversation going, to try to get more people to pay attention. And then it, it kind of worked because you know we're talking about a it. A lot of people are talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. No, the only time that there was ever like a controversial Captain America was the uh, Secret Empire when he. Uh, what do you call it? He became Nazi Captain America. Um, and it wasn't actually Steve Rogers. It was someone else. Like his, I think it was like a clone from his, from the Tesseract. Um, and Deadpool calls him Steve, which is amazing and blows up his toilet in jail. So if you haven't checked that out, go do that. Um, yes, but yeah, it, it eased that. It was definitely a clickbait, for the person and phrase it different like he phrased it in a way that would just draw attention i'll be back in one okay as you can see sonny is dropping everything (laughs) all right just my my ear went on and i wanted to try to shut off the noise in case there's anything in the back yeah, no, you're good. Um, okay. But yeah, like I said, it, it, it yep. it's, it's just all chasing for the click. That was it, I think, on that one. All right. And now we're done talking about I'm done talking about it. Are you done talking about yeah. it? Okay, so now on to another controversial subject of DC and Marvel, or well, more Marvel, paying people shut up money. And what this is about is the writer, Ed Brubaker, who wrote the winter soldier and actually wrote the issue we talked about um last week which is uh excuse me not last yeah it was last yeah. week uh captain america who will wield the shield ed brubaker was the writer of that he's the creator of the winter soldier and he was saying how he was complaining that let's say marvel movies you know they're they pay people for like their characters and then they're making these billion dollar movies and the person who sold it, like I'd say, Ed, they're not getting that much money. Like, you know, they sell it before, then the movie makes so much. And he was saying that it's not that much money, that he got more money based on having a cameo in the Winter Soldier movie than he got for, you know, creating the Winter Soldier. And then Tana Hissy Coates, who did a lot for the Black Panther and really pushed for the Black Panther to get made into a movie, in which we know, 
you know, it's a movie that made over a billion dollars. He too was agreeing that the writers are not, the people who created these characters and such, they're not getting that much money. But the thing is with that is sometimes they're getting these people to sign a contract before and they're agreeing to it and then they're getting paid a certain amount and then later the movie becomes huge but the deal's already done. And then Jim Starlin, who has created the likes of Thanos, Gamora, and Drax, who many know were in the Avengers, right? And Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, that he so dumb and that he made more money off of selling a minor character for the Superman versus Batman Dawn of Justice movie. And when he mentioned this, Marvel reached out to him and they they made a deal. Like I said, it wasn't public of what he got, but that he seemed pretty satisfied with it. So that's why like people are saying it's pretty much like if they're speaking out, then the big uh, you know, the big names are giving them kind of shut up money. Like, don't mention that we're not paying you that much for these characters. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Well, here's here's the thing with, with I've seen many interviews with people like Donny Cates and uh, just anyone on the Marvel side. I've seen ones with Jeff Johns and from DC side. But the one thing that always stuck out to me was when Cates would talk about, like, the people that work in Marvel. Uh, there's, a, there's I think, 120 books that are published every month for Marvel, I think, where we're at right now. It's either between 100 and 120. There are 16 exclusive writers or exclusive members, I think, as writers for Marvel. So, say they take... Say, say it's 15 of them. Say they take two books each. Well, that's only 30 titles they're working on. What about the other 70 to 90? Those guys are not technically under contract. They're they're contracted through Marvel, but they're not getting paid, you know, really more than the guys that are exclusive to Marvel. Um, So having those rights is... You, you create a new character, and that character could skyrocket. If you don't have an exclusive contract, you're not getting anything. As far as... And I think it was uh, Ta- uh, Ta-Nehisi said, good thing uh, comic book writing is not my main source of income. And that alone shows you that, like I said, that they're not being paid. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of people that have come forth and said, like, uh, unless you're doing a creator-owned book, or for those that don't know, an indie book like Image or Boom or IDW you're not seeing any really funds coming through that. A lot of guys are working like that aren't under exclusive contract with Marvel or DC. They're under just a regular contract with them writing a, like a six issue or whatever. They're doing a, an indie book too. So it isn't just related to one uh, side of things. Um, so as far as you were bringing up like uh, Starlin and all them, I remember there was a big controversy with him when uh, Infinity War came out because everyone was getting like the trades and everything else, but he wasn't receiving anything for it. He was so happy to see like Thanos on the big screen, oh. but he didn't get any of the like they didn't send him any of the books that they were coming out with at that time. All of his books that were published, they he wasn't receiving his own copy of. And, like, there was just so much. They gave him a cameo, like you said about Brubaker. They gave him a cameo in it. But they never gave him his own book back. Like, he wrote, I'm trying to think, there was a, a big Thanos trade that he came out with right before Infinity War dropped. Oh. And it went out, it sold very well, because obviously it's coming out around time that Thanos is going to be, you know, popular. And... He's like still waiting on Mar. Like I was reading a tweet, it was like still waiting on Marvel to give me my book, and it's been X amount of months since I wrote it. And then finally he got one, but he had to pay for it himself. So it was like you, wow. you it, there's no winning in that situation. So with that shut up money, like they're literally, uh, how can I say it? They're literally just juicing everyone for what they're worth for them. Yeah. So if like a, a low a low level writer that no one knows of comes on and you know takes over and makes a character let's just say for Squirrel Girl 
you know, and the character become like just takes off. That person ain't gonna see that kind of money for what they did. They might see it in comic base, but yeah. they're not gonna see it if they do a live action or like an animated series about it. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing with contracts. Like they said that they they're gonna try to get you. Like, okay, we'll give you something because they know that you're not making this big. You're not, you're not making the big bucks, and then you sign the contract and you've already agreed to it. And then hey, they're making all this money, and it's like we they're like we we owe you nothing yeah. else. Here's some money just so that you keep quiet. Yeah, that's the thing with contracts, and it's hard. You know, like I said, if you're an upcoming writer, it's hard not to take a a big paycheck, you know, or what seems like a big paycheck at the time, to say, no, I'm going to wait out, because then you're thinking, hey, I can miss out on, on this pretty nice check. And one interesting thing is that Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster, who made Superman, sold the rights to Superman for only $130. Yeah, yeah, dude. yeah so that is that. Any more news any last minute things you'd like to talk about when it comes to shut up money and anything no i overall it was a pretty good news week it you know i i, I think with that shut up money it was it, it finally is starting to bring attention to the writers and even the artists too artists aren't they're they're creating the character yeah. that the writer is basically like envisioning in his head so or yeah. vice versa the artist has it you know drawn a paper already and the writer gives them a name and a backstory but you're never going to be able to yeah. capture that later on and be able to make something off it if you're not one of the top guys and yeah. i love how in the in the deadpool movie in the opening credits and it's like about the writers it's like from the real heroes of the yeah. story me as a writer i love right that. right but yeah other than that i mean yeah i don't got anything else Okay, so now that we're done talking about shut up money, we'll mention my mail call. And I pit up some money and said, if anybody can guess it, what my mail call is, I will give them $10, no matter how many people gets it right. And, again, my hint was that what I got has to do with something with a gigantic trial. Jamie guessed Civil War, and I can honestly say nobody guessed it right, so I won't be losing any money today. What I got in my mail call is the Fantastic Four, the Trial of Galactus. Ah, uh, okay. That makes sense. And this is a, yep, so something with a gigantic trial. So there you go. I keep all my money and I have a book that I look forward to. Yeah, I can see I wanted to get into something with Fantastic Four. I have an interest in that storyline. And the interesting thing with that book is. That it's not just like issue after issue after issue. They made it so it's just whatever parts of the, um, the issues that it deals with, they only put in the parts that go with the actual storyline of the Trial of Galactus. Okay, that's cool. So, yeah, I'm interested to read it. And that is my mail call of the week. <laughs> the Fantastic Four, the Trial of Galactus. And uh, I'm happy to say I keep all my Great. money. That's all you needed. Jamie, do you have any... Mail calls you like uh, to share, or I know you had, I know you posted on Instagram. You had quite a few polls of the week, and I must say your uh, collection was pretty impressive. Yeah, uh, I don't have anything right at this moment because, like I said from the week prior, I'm still trying to catch up. Um, but once we get that, you know, live show done on the 31st, I'll be uh, posting more. But I, it, this week I'll have another, you know, Instagram social media photo of what I picked up. Because I'm not obviously going to be able to do it next weekend. Um, but after that, I'm hoping to have, you know, pick of the week. All that good stuff. Pulls of the week. Consistently. Or bi-weekly. I think I'm going to do it bi-weekly. But still put it out there. Okay. Well, that's cool. And speaking of weekly, we have our topic of the week. The topic of the week is what story arc from any publisher would you like to see made into a movie? And my co-host has the top three picks of the week. That I do. So, we have uh, Barry Reese uh, saying that they'd like to see, from the Marvel side, uh, Rise of the Midnight Suns through uh, Siege of Darkness. I like Ghost Rider and Rise of. Uh, that it was a... Uh, 
underappreciated crossover in the 90s. Um, it reimagined Morbius, brought Blade into the limelight, and Darkhold. Uh, it was a pretty good story. Brought Lilith and company. Um, it could bring more of the supernatural side to the MCU on a grand scale and basically leave, lead it almost like an Infinity Saga. Um, he said, for DC, the question is then in violence because it's the question. Um, and then Indy, he put uh, Grendel, Devil by the Deed. Um, says, likes Grendel, and it's a good place to start. Uh, our next one is David Schuschler Jr. Uh, wants to see a Witchblade movie be made. I still really like the old comic and think it needs to be looked at again. The old series didn't do justice, but the first series came closer to the end of the story. Or as a story, or eh. first series came closer closer to the end. The story's got a lot better. Sorry, I can't talk today. Um, and lastly. Our fired and rehired executive producer, Dave Markusik. Um, He said, Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe. It would be so fun to see Ryan Reynolds just joking around the whole movie while killing off all of our favorite actors we've grown to love over the years. So, yeah, those those were some uh, great picks. A lot of unique ones this time, which is nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, Sonny, uh, what are your thoughts? Okay. So, yeah, I liked uh, a lot of what I was hearing. Like I said, I, and I, I, said, I am a, a Ghost Rider fan, so I liked it, and especially with Morbius, and then we're going to see Morbius in the MCU, or it should be in the MCU. He's in the Marvel movies. We're going to see Blade. It'd be cool if we see Ghost Rider come back. You know, It's been a while since there's been a Ghost Rider movie, and I don't think the Ghost Rider movies really lived up to the, the comic books. But yeah, like I said, I really like all the answers. I said, you know, I love Deadpool. Um, which Blade I'm not too familiar with. Like I said, I got a comic book spawn on which played the other week, so I should be getting familiar soon. And for me, my pick that I would, my story arc that I would like to see made into a movie is the Hulk Future and Perfect. Okay. Now, me, I for love that is my favorite Hulk story arc. And I truly believe, I'll say it now, I do believe in years to come, they will make a Hulk movie of Future and Perfect. Okay. Willing to put that $10 on it? <laughs> uh, I'd probably pick more, but I mean, like I said, it's in years yeah. to come. So. We'll see how much you, both of us are making in years to come. Um, yeah. So that's Marvel. I mean, do you have a DC one, maybe even an indie like story you'd want to? Uh, well, I know. Well, I guess I'd say for indie, well, I think there is talk of there being another Spawn yeah. movie. But I guess if we're in, if we're gonna say indie, then quickly I'll say. Thought to my head would be Wildcats. Okay, original then, Wildcats, not the. Oh, but you, I don't, I don't have. Uh, original yeah. Wildcats, not the stuff that uh, Jim Lee brought over that they never used in DC. Yeah, more of the original stuff. Yeah, I'm trying to have an actual story arc, and then for for DC, I don't think it will ever be made. But I would love to see Identity Crisis. Oh yeah, that'd be a hard one to... for DC. Get around on. Yeah, it's, it's very mature, but it has like an all-star cast of superheroes. But Identity Crisis is one that I would love to see made into a movie. All right, all right, cool. Um, as for me, DC wise, I would love absolutely. I would lose my mind over a Green Lantern Blackest Night. Like I talk about that. That was my gateway in. That was my the hook. That was that final nail in the coffin. That just like. I I need I need that to happen. In my lifetime I need to see a Blackest Night movie. Or like an MCU style DCU into Blackest Night. Um as for Marvel, I would really like to see like a Marvel Zombies. Something just off base, just completely different. I think it's a good storyline. I think it's also, like, if you, because you had the Fantastic Four hopefully premiering in the next couple years, I want to say. I hope. Fingers crossed. But you can use that ultimate storyline and drive it right into it. Um, and, and real quick, sorry to kick off. Uh, Dave said, Marvel What If series has zombies. Well, it's not the movie. We're talking about movie. No. Uh, yeah, they have zombies. It, I mean, 
that'd be cool. Okay, so I'll change my answer based on Dave, who is now fired again. Um, let me think. I would like to see... God, now I can't think of one. Uh, you can keep the zombies. I, oh, fine, I'm keeping the zombies. It's fine. Dave, go away. Um, as for indie, I would love... Absolutely, we're never gonna get it, and I'm gonna tell you this right now. As much as I would love it, uh, a saga movie. Sonny, I don't know if you know what a saga is, but that is probably yeah, me that that is the book by Brian K. Vaughn. That just you you can't make a movie of it, but I would love to see saga. Like it's just it, it's out of this world, literally. Uh, so. I, I those are my three picks. Cool. All right, man. And then we have a, a comment from Dave that says Oblivion song. Oh yeah, that that is another good one. Uh, Dave, just to let you know, so you could be proven wrong too. They got the rights for a TV series now, so it's gonna be an adaption. Can't use it. <laughs> there you go. I'm not too familiar with Oblivion uh, song. It, uh, Anything you can tell me about yeah, it's uh, Robert Kirkman uh, is writing it. It's basically another world gets pulled into the United, like the U.S. It was an experiment gone wrong. Uh, they heard this like this song, so they called it the Oblivion song. That when it happened, it brought you know aliens, mutants, creatures, and I forget what part it is. I think it's Philadelphia. Is part closed off? And that's the only sanctuary that they have, but they have uh, two brothers that one's in the obliv- like in the oblivion and one's in town, and the one in town he's trying to bring people back to civilization again, but they've been entrapped for years and that's all they know now. So it, it's a good it's a good story, beautiful art. Um, I think it's an underrated book by most people because I don't really hear many people talk about it. So, but I was actually the one that got Dave stuck in Oblivion song when we started working together. I think it's at issue like 32 or something like that now. So it's been out for a long time. Um, but yeah, it's definitely one I would check out. That That is my like sleeper comic of all comics. All right. And then, so there you go. There's our topic of the week. We'll be posting the next topic of the week within the next couple of days on all our uh, social media posts, on on Facebook, Instagram, all that good jazz. We'll come up with the topic of the week soon. So now we are on to the topic of our works, where I get to talk about me, me, me. As usual. So, hey, I'm, I'm in the film, I'm getting in the film industry, so it kind of goes with right. it, you know, you gotta, I have to boost my ego up. I've been too, I've been too quiet and Good thing you closed the door, the you can't time. fit through it anymore. No, I haven't eaten that much snacks, and I've been, I've been pumping some iron, especially because I can say I'm going to need to be a bit stronger. I don't think they're going to have any uh, muscle suits like they have for The Rock, <laughs> but I have landed the role of Eddie Brock Venom in a short film. So I'm excited about that. I've been learning my lines, and hopefully I have more updates on that soon. And I'd love to get it out there, so... You know, we love comic books, so the chance of playing a superhero is, uh, is you know, superhero slash super villain is, uh, definitely has me super excited, so I'm super dedicated to it. And also, last night slash this morning at like 6 a.m., I finished writing another book. This book is called The Good Priest. Oh, God. So, see, everybody always gets scared of the name, and I'm like, I'm like the name literally tells people it's called The Good Priest. Okay, Sonny. So I'm really excited about it. I like to talk about it too much because when I write something, it's a while before I finish it. I to, excuse me. When I finish writing something, it's a while before I release it because I do editing. I'm working on this. I'm releasing something else that I wrote a year ago, but I wrote it and then still posting chapters of To Be Alive and Desired, and I will finish posting it before the month is over. So that is my work. No, Jamie, any updates for you? No, nothing nothing too big just yet um still ba- mainly working on concept stuff and you know this on our podcast um with the with the short uh 
you know, your little short film. Now, is that another one of those stop motion or is this just. No, this is this is the, me. You, you will actually see no, no stop motion, no animation. It is OK, me. so I'm going to let everybody know right now. Once Sonny does this, I will be posting the link everywhere, blowing it up because I think this is going to be Oscar worthy. Well, not Oscar worthy. But thank you, thank you. We'll, we'll leave no, it. No, no, we we can't. It, it, it did too much, just too much justice there. Um, what's that one for like worst actors of the year awards? Isn't that? Oh, the one you got the, you got the Razzies. Yeah, there you go. That's the one you're we're gonna be on. Jamie, the king of the Razzies. Yes, Ojek. that is my nickname because you know that's what I think of Sonny. Um, but no, we will be posting that. I'm very happy for Sonny. Uh. I can't wait to see your version of Eddie Brock because I've seen your version of bad guy Roman Reigns in a stop motion, which was <laughs> uh, hilarious, to say the least. Um, well, good. That's what they're going for. So if it can make you laugh, at least you're being entertained, yeah. right? Even with Eddie Brock. I mean, it's, it's more of a serious thing, but if you're laughing, I mean, hey, at least you're entertained in some way, right? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we'll be posting that shortly whenever – he gets uh around to it so yeah hopefully it's done soon like i said i i didn't write it i didn't i'm not i won't be directing i'll just be you know usually i write and with my series i direct as well but with this i will just be playing the role of eddie brock i'll just be acting so yeah that's that so yeah can't wait so that, yeah, me me neither i'm excited for it and i'm excited to hear more about you know your comic when you have more updates yes. soon I'll, I'll, I'll keep getting on you about yeah. that so i'll be sending you some stuff you over you said what two three months yes and we're only at week all right all right yes see well at least you got me excited you got some of us excited for for the release of your comic yes. book or at least the screen all right or the script of it so so speaking of comic books it is time for our review of the week, I recommended Jamie. I picked the I picked the comic first to do. It is Daredevil: Born Again by Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli. Jamie, I, I picked it out for you to read, so you read it, and let's hear it. Okay, so as I think I said earlier in the pre-show, I've had limited knowledge of daredevil other than the tv show uh the ben affleck horrible one um i I enjoyed did you good for you someone hates you um and you know tie-ins when it comes to big events um i never i always told myself when they start issue one again restart a series i was going to try it out and i never got around to it but sunny gave me born again and Starting off, it like, because I know you're, you're what do you got, deluxe edition, or is it just a trade? Uh, it's okay, it's trade. so that encapsulates what issues was it? I think it's the end is two thirty three, but the beginning is was it two twenty? So the story, the story of Born Again starts on two twenty seven, but this trade gives you two. Yes, so two. So I start off with two twenty six. I wanted to read it the same way you did. Um, so I. Reading it, I had no idea what was going on at first. And I was like, what did you give me? But there was this internal struggle going on with uh, Matt Murdock. And just talking about, he's like, I'm still in my prime. He's sitting on a rooftop just thinking to himself, like, I, I still got Daredevil. That's all that matters. Um, as we go through the series, we start seeing him start to lose a little bit. He, lo- he lost his attorney job. Uh I don't understand at one point there Karen Karen Page was a she she was just a, a druggy um out of nowhere um you had Foggy closing up basically their uh attorney office and then uh come to find out that Kingpin was is the one that set up Matt Murdock who they lost everything because of uh he blows up Matt Murdock's was it apartment at the time yeah. um yeah because uh karen page you know who's a heroin addict yes. she gave up there she gave up you know matt murdoch's uh identity yes, as uh, yeah i was, so I was that gave 
Kingpin yeah, huge. The, yeah, he it. and then Kingpin found out who it was. He set him up. I don't want I don't want to give away too much of the story, but I'm trying my hardest not to, but I'm probably going to. Um now that Sonny just said that. But we lead into Matt having this uh complex where he thinks everyone's out to get him. He's like Foggy's working for him. Uh everybody uh was it uh Ben Ulrich was working for him at one point, he thought, and he just kept going on and on about it. Uh after his apartment blows up I'm trying to think where we're at here. After his apartment blows up, he's basically just trying to get by. Um Karen Karen Page is trying to work with what she has, trying to get back to Matt. Uh Gloria, who was one of Matt's, I think, ex-girlfriends, is now with Foggy trying to get her life together. Um, and Foggy should helping out as much as he can. Always trying to like think of Matt more in a brighter light than what they're, you know, describing it as. Um Basically Murdoch hits the low point. And we see this one uh, panel where he's calling Foggy, being basically like, "It's happening, you know. You, it, you're. I, I, I hope you're. Not, I hope you're not in on it, but you, I think you are. You know, you're working for the Kingpin. Uh, everyone's against me. We, we, we gotta figure out what. He, I, I, I gotta kill the Kingpin. Like that. That. That was his only thing he had in his mind. Is I gotta take out the Kingpin. Um. Foggy says something to him on the phone, and Matt basically leaves. Um, we move on to him encountering Kingpin. Uh, Matt, yeah, Matt gets, uh, looks like he gets the upper hand, but then ends up getting destroyed by the Kingpin, which I have to say one thing about this book. This is the most I've ever seen Kingpin shirtless ever yeah. in my life like he's always working out but he's just fat and no shirt on um yeah, i'm pretty sure he looks like he's almost in a song i think that part. i think he was um i think that's yeah right, yeah so he loses kingpin sets it up to make it look like uh matt murdoch was drunk driving because he knows the identity of daredevil and he cr- he stole a cab and crashed it they poured whiskey on him you know make him like he's drunk and beat up the cabbie. Um, fast forward to him waking up. He's talking. He he remembers things from when he was younger, when he first lost his vision, when he was in the hospital. He remembers a lady being there. He could smell her. He could hear her. And she leaned over and said, promise me you're not going to give up. And he says yes. And he remembers feeling a gold cross um, later on. After he does wake up after the car crash, he's laying there and uh, a nun comes over him and he feels the cross again and he still remembers the smell. And her name, uh, the nun's name is Maggie and he asks Maggie, he's like, are you my mother? And she goes, no. And he goes, and this, this is one of my favorite points. And I don't know why, but he's like, I heard her heart skip a beat. She's lying to me. And I thought that was that was pretty like n- nostalgic for the sense of like he still remembered that after all that time, he, even though it's uh, you know his superhuman abilities, he still remembers that. Um, so we fast forward a little bit more. Uh, Karen's still trying to get her way, any way possible, to get to Matt. Um, we have on. Like almost like a side plot where the one of the cops was the ones that actually we find out actually set up Matt to save his child, working with the kingpin. Um, and the reporter Ben Ulrich basically wants the scoop. He he knows he set him up. Ben knows that Matt Murdock is Daredevil, but won't say anything to anybody. Um, he confronts the cop finally. Uh, sees that his son is in the hospital on Christmas Eve. And then come to find out he, his son doesn't make a Christmas day. Um, as he was breaking the story, one of the Kingpin's henchmen, henchwomen, I think it's Lois, uh, 
comes out and breaks Ben Ulrich's hand so he can't type no more and then uh, tries to kill the cop, which I'm trying to remember his name and I just, for the life of me, can't. Um, but moving on, we get to the point where uh, Matt finally wakes up trying to get every, you know, trying to fix himself up. Um, Karen's still trying to make her way towards him. Uh, she gets in touch with Foggy again and the guy that she was with that was basically driving her around and selling her junk, uh, it said basically he's going to kill both of them if she leaves him and she does to go to Foggy, you know, the whole thing ensues. She leaves Foggy to go back with, uh, Paulo, I believe it was. And basically she tried, he tries to beat her kingpin's got it set up where they were going to kill both of them um it doesn't work out that well uh karen leaves paulo for dead finally meets with matt again um but yeah uh the last issue which is actually one of i think my favorites now um shows one of the characters kingpin talks about throughout most of the story arc and it's nuke um, we get a cameo in that issue also from Captain America. He, he gets more intrigued or integrated into the story. Um, basically, near the end, uh, Matt's helping Karen through her problems. Um, he encounters Nuke, who I didn't realize was just Captain America on roids, more or less. He yeah, take his much. red, white, or blue pill, and it'd give him a different outcome every time. So, pushing forward, Captain America comes becomes involved in it. Uh, we get him looking more into what who Nuke is. Come to find out, he's a failed uh, super soldier serum uh, patient, and Matt is trying to stop him. He can't. Captain America finally finds him. They have a fight. Knocks him through a window. Lands on top of him. Wakes up. Is trying to get him back. Matt Murdock is now dressed up as Daredevil. Finally sees him. And rushes him to the hospital. Nuke says no hospitals. So he took him to one of his safe houses to get fixed up. Um, the coolest thing about that issue was the fact that Daredevil was driving a cab. In Hell's Kitchen, blind, just hitting cars. Like, it looked like a bumper car scene the whole thing through. Uh, I gotta say, I don't want to give away the ending. Um, but this story arc has made me a Daredevil fan now. So I think I'm going to start picking up Daredevil on my polls. Um, Glad to hear it. Like I said, I left a lot of good detail out because of the fact that it's one of those ones that if you want to get into Daredevil, you have to read this arc. Like, if you want a starting point, start here. It's 100%. I had some issues with the fact that I didn't know a lot was going on. If you know the realm of the characters you from the show or so be it anywhere else, um, it, it's great to start there. And I now I want to know more. So back issue diving is probably what I'm going to do. But overall, if I had to give this a score, I'm going to give it a 9.7. And the only reason I'm giving it a 9.7 is Very because good. of the fact that there is still... I still have questions about certain character aspects, character plots, um, and what's going in and what happened to them. So, yeah, 9.7. It was a great read. I know I probably butchered a lot of it, but I didn't want to give too much away. And it's not that I'm holding back on it. It's that if I said something it give away most of the story <laughs> no problem you did good all right so 9.7 from jamie and then now i will also give my review on this so, so jamie was pretty much going through the story and for me i had heard like oh you know, what are some of the best marvel stories and dear devil born again was listed as the number one story and then many people were commenting under the video like, oh, I bet he's going to be Daredevil Born Again. So I was like, let me check this out. Let me look into it. And then I got the trade, and I read it. And 
right off the bat, I was just uh, engrossed in the story. And what I love is that there's sometimes I like a superhero story where you have an all-star cast, you have all your favorite superheroes and supervillains, and you know the world's at stake. And but sometimes I like a story where it's more, like I guess I'd say, realistic, more you know human problems, like. Where Karen Page, she's a you know a drug addict. She's addicted to heroin, and that's why she gives gives up Daredevil's identity. And you know, I really thought that this story it was a lot more story driven. It had a lot of action, like you know, you you'd see fighting, but it was more like you know shooting between two people, things like that. More fist fights, not too much uh, wild powers. And I just think it was one of the most one of the best stories that I've ever read. And and even regular books, comic books, anything, and you just you know you see it was like a different take on things too, like how Daredevil was brought down, not just getting beat up. It was mentally he was he was defeated mentally before going into that fight with an almost naked king. Yes, Man. and it was good to see Man Murdock make his way up, and even though Karen Page gave him up, and and you're mad at her for doing that, you know you also see that she has her struggles and. She's going through a really hard time to try to get back to Matt. And I really like their romance. It's not the typical, it's not like, oh, he's perfect. She's perfect. It's, you know, she's very damaged. And, but he still loves her. And like I said, I think uh, one part you talked about was when the the non Maggie, you know, the thing about being his mother, like, so, you know, I could tell she was lying. I thought that was a, a very touching part. And like I said, I like talking about uh, the romance with Daredevil and Karen Page. And because, too, like I said, this touched on different subjects of things. Like I said, depression, being down, uh, addiction. And, you know, in life, you know, there are people who, who do struggle with addictions. I've known people who struggle with addictions. And I can honestly say I've never done drugs. I've never smoked. I've never drank alcohol. But that's just me. I There are things that I'll struggle with with somebody else to say, oh, I don't have a struggle with that. And then there are things that other people struggle with that, you know, it's not a problem for me, but it doesn't mean that we should just you know, leave people to rot, you know, everybody has their struggles in life. And, you know, I thought this did a good job of showing that Daredevil, he still cared after everything. Right. And, you know, later on, like I said, you know, um, like I said, you mentioned Captain America's in there, and even in, I believe it was issue 232, a couple other big names make a guest appearance yeah, they as do. well. I won't mention who they are, but like I said, yeah, so later on in the story, you get your big fighting you know, scenes and you see some more favorite characters, but story wise, I was just in love with it. And Daredevil Born Again, like I said, truly made me love Daredevil on another level. So Daredevil Born Again is one of my all time favorite comics. And I give it a 10 out of 10. Of course. No. And as you were alluding to, like it, it, it's a human, like it's more of a humanized aspect of Matt Murdock now, other than, anything else because now he's paranoid he's he, he's freaking out um like i said there's a lot we left out because of the fact that you learn why he is that way as the story progresses um i try to make this spoiler and spoiler free at the same time so you, i give you we try to both give you a little bit of what's happening and a little bit of not knowing so that way you guys can go look for yourselves if you guys want to um but yeah it was it it was a ride. I'll give it that. And like I said, the only reason I gave it a 9.7 is because there's stuff that I still want to figure out, but I'm going to do that on my own. And who knows, we might revisit this someday and I'll probably give it that 10 out of 10, or it might go down to like a three. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see when we get there. But right now, yeah, that's where it sits. It, it definitely, I definitely want to start reading daredevil now. Thanks to that. So thank you for that pick, Sonny. <clears throat> my pleasure. And like I said, so I believe that daredevil born again is worth the hype. Jamie gives it 9.7. I give it 10 out of 10. So that comes up to an average of 9.85 9. out yeah. of 10. From both of us, the average. So that is Daredevil Born Again. Now it's time for Jamie to pick our next book that we will be reviewing. Okay, so my pick for Sonny is a little bit different. It's a five-issue series. Sonny, for those who don't know, is a big X-Men fan, if you can't tell from the big epic collection that's sitting behind him. Um, I'm giving him something off the cuff on this. It's a different take and on the mutants 
and their jeans. It is called X Men, uh, the worst X Men ever. Uh, I will give a quick synopsis of it because I do have it here. It says uh, Bailey uh, Hoskins has just discovered he's a mutant. For some who's never, or for someone who's never been special, never stood out, discovering he's gifted is truly a gift entry into the halls of Xavier School for gift, yeah, gifted children and into the ranks of the world famous X Men. Sonny, this is one of those ones that I think. It, it, it's definitely a thought-provoking story. So, I give you X-Men uh, for a different uh, point of view. <laughs> Great. I'm excited. You, you know I love X-Men. Yeah. And then, like, every now and then, I'll try to keep up. I can see what's going on with X-Men news, but it's going to be good. I'm excited to read something newer. And just that name alone gets me excited. Yeah, X Men, the worst X Men. Yeah, it, it, so, it, it, when when I saw it, I oh. had to pick it up, and I was like, when, "What do you mean worst X Men ever?" And he, once you read it, you'll realize why. <laughs> well, I'm excited to. I'm definitely excited to read that one. Like I said, you know, I love X Men. It's only five issues, so I should get to it uh, rather quickly. Yeah. All right. Well, I say we've done another show. We'll be back next week. Um, any last minute things before we go? No, just the right? same as usual. Just uh, come check us out on all social medias. Uh, you'll have this will be up on YouTube, edited and Spotify by the weekend. Um, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see every one of you in the next one. That is it. We'll see you next week on the twenty eighth, and then our special uncensored episode will be. On the 31st, more details will be posted about that online soon. So, we'll call episode 6 of the Codex Podcast. We'll call it a day. Episode 6 is done. Y'all take care. We'll see you next week. See you guys.